Welcome to Room Service, I'm Sarah Richardson. Does your home office still work when it's time to play? We'll create an office lounge that does double duty, giving it a warm and masculine touch. With some unique vintage office accessories, a hand from the client to give the fireplace the once over. Nice. And a visit to a blacksmith who gives iron accessories the custom touch. We're making it fun when the working day's done, and it's only on room service. challenge for modern families. Many people create a family room that's adjoined to the kitchen and then the original living room becomes redundant. That's exactly what's happened in this house. They've done an extensive renovation, created an amazing family room, and now no one uses the living room. However, this living room is connected to the home office. And interestingly, this home office used to be the entrance to the house. And I think it has created an incredible workspace. It gets both south and east light which is ideal and it's located on the main floor. What we'd like to do is get the office up and running properly and the living room is sort of like sitting there and never gets used. It's just not, it's more of a storage area for furniture than anything else. One of the eyesores of this living room for me, I have to say, I'm going to confess, is this fireplace. Um, I just find it's quite outdated looking. Everything else has been brought up to date and modernized, but this has been left. So we need to address this mantle and paint this, maybe add some tile, redo the hearth. I'm sure that with little expense, but a little bit of effort, we can turn this around and really make it a feature. In the living room, there's some uh, tables my uncle made. Uh, there's a walnut burl table I'd like to keep, and basically everything else can go. Another thing I'd like to think about here is not making it another place with just another sofa, but creating a space that's really a terrific area to sit down and have a conversation, whether it's having a meeting with clients, since it's right beside the office, or sort of while entertaining guests. I think four chairs would be a terrific setup in this room. Bring them in a little bit closer, forget the old sofa with the bad slip cover, forget the old wing chairs, replace this with some new elements that will really make it feel far more inviting. I'm thinking of going with a fairly masculine palette in here. We've got sort of olivey greens on the walls and more subdued colors throughout the house. So we can definitely handle kind of darker, richer tones here and bring them into the office. Right now it's just a functional office, but I want it to be comfortable to sit in. I want it just to look uncluttered because right now it's a disaster zone. As far as the office goes, built-in is the key when it's this small a space. So a large desk surface here, maybe a new pendant light, something that will create a little bit of mood in this room, and more storage here built in under the window and on either side of the radiator. I'm thinking of going with a fairly dark wood tone. We want this to feel somewhat masculine, but yet contemporary and sleek at the same time. If the office is designed for the man in the house and sleek is the style you're after, then prepare to get dressed for business. We want our office lounge to look as polished and professional as an elegant silk tie. We're designing the space to be a calm and soothing environment to blend seamlessly with existing elements and create a rich backdrop for both work and play. Our color palette takes a nod from the first cup of the day, dressed in shades of coffee, mocha, and cafe au lait to make it warm and comforting day or night. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. gentleman's office is underway. I've ordered a desk and some seating, but what I really wanted to do was to make this feel sort of more like a vintage office. I don't know what you want your office to be like. Some people want them crisp and contemporary. Others want a more tactile feel, something a bit more old-fashioned and rustic. This building has actually been around since 1852, and the shop's been here since sort of the mid-60s, specializing in vintage office furniture. It's literally stacked to the ceiling, and it's a treasure trove. 
on in and let me show you what they've got. If the idea of reconditioning vintage pieces makes you feel a little bit queasy, then you can check out this side of the store, which is filled with reproduction and new pieces. However, I think that the old pieces are far more interesting. After all, you don't see a cabinet like this filled with vintage desk accessories every day. We've got pen holders on an onyx slab, original ink wells. These add just that little extra touch to an office. What else do they have? Oh, this is very cool. This is an old step-on garbage can in wood. I've never seen anything like this. Apparently it came from a doctor's office and I think that that again just so rich. Incorporating a number of these different woods into the office you can still mix them with some newer elements as well like I think this lamp is this is a keeper for us. I love this. It's got it's made of I think this is made of walnut and you can see it's got the original wide socket base so you can either you can still find sometimes the wide socket light bulbs or there's an adapter that you can get from a lighting store and then you can use just a regular size light bulb but that's something that I want to point out because if you're looking for vintage lighting you'll often find that wide base look at these great these are old um, card files from a library this has original brass hardware and they're priced at about ten dollars per drawer so you can get one of these big units. You could use it to store arts and crafts supplies, pens and pencils. It even has these two little pull-out trays so you can keep everything organized. I think they make great side tables and just a really interesting piece. It adds texture to that office environment. You can also use things like an old fan. This one has a brass blade. You just want to keep your fingers out of it when it's turned on. Or these oak letter trays. These are a terrific addition to the office. You can stack them up, get them in different ways different sizes you can use these as your in and out trays you can use them as stationary trays and they look so much nicer than what you can find today well what you can find when you're in here is a vast collection of things that help to add that certain element of a nod to the past into your home office next on room service I have a whole new respect for tile installers George and I tackle the fireplace Okay, we're doing something a little bit unusual here today. Instead of having the client sit back and watch the process, instead I've got the client doing the project. This is great. So, George, what are you doing there? I'm making a mess of things, Sarah. Great. Okay. <laughs> what we're doing is the fireplace that is here now and as original was pretty ugly and we wanted to come up with an inexpensive solution to change the entire appearance of this fireplace. So we started out by removing the supports that were on the mantle and then we are going to add a new cap on top of this because this is actually tied in through the original plaster and it's also behind the drywall so this mantle had to stay. We're going to cap it with a new one. George did a very good job of painting all of the brick. And how much paint did this use? Oh, uh, three quarters of a gallon. So this stuff really soaks it up, something you're gonna wanna keep in mind if you have brick and you wanna paint it. And we just used a latex paint to paint this. Now what we're doing is we are going to use these mosaics, these are really beautiful tumbled marble mosaic. And we're gonna do it on this front piece here. And then we've got another stone. This is called a cobblestone marble. We went with a 16 by 24 inch tile. The real advantage to using a tile like this instead of a solid slab is, let's be honest, it's the budget. Um, doing a hearth, a solid piece of hearth usually costs about $400 and these tiles were about $25 each and we only needed five tiles. So as far as budget goes, we're stretching it. We're doing a good job here. And now, you've also cut those, and are we ready to put those in place? Yeah. Okay, great. Some of these are gonna fall out because they just... They're gonna pop out? Yeah, okay. Just, we have to glue them back I know. On. Nice. I've never tiled before, George. Do I have to, um... No, I just have to press it in, move it around, let the mortar okay. sink into everything, and then we uh, let it dry. And then, and then what? Then we ground it? Yeah. There's another yeah. one? Okay, no, that's, it. it's the little black piece. It's this little guy. Nope, not that guy. It's like making a puzzle. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. Okay, 
Okay, so do you normally just grout as you go along? I don't normally session? do this. <laughs> I thought general contractors were supposed to know all Apparently, this Apparently, you're supposed to only glue as to a certain extent and then continue, and then continue again, because otherwise it'll dry up and set up on you. Okay, so how, what's your, what's your working time? Oh, then? about 25 minutes or okay. something like that. All right. Oh, wow, this is looking beautiful. <gasps> George, this is incredible. What's our next step after this dries? We fill it with... Uh, we're going with a natural gray grout. Okay. Uh, well, a wall mix, um, okay. actually a floor mix to give you a nice sort of a sandy grit to it instead right. of a smooth Because uh, the difference finish. is if you want a smooth finish, you go with a wall grout. Wall, yeah. Otherwise, a floor grout has a sanded Correct. finish to it. That's right. And then these, you cut, you use the water saw to cut these, right? Yes, right. And now, if you don't have one of those, you can, you can rent those, yes, right? Yes, from any rental place. Okay. So these, just to give us yep. an idea, yep. are going to set right in here. All right, we'll bring it flush to the edge here, right and then the we'll edge. any bit of grouting we'll do at the end, and the color will be very okay. similar, so you won't really know. Okay, now when you're doing this, do you normally put a grout line across the front when you're using stone like On this? On an old home like this, I wouldn't do it because the hardwood floor is original, and it could move and crack okay. your grout line. It looks like uh, it Not doesn't so look good. well at all. Okay, yeah. so it's better to leave this, and we'll only grout across the yeah. back. Yeah, about a Here. half inch, three eighths, something like that. Okay, can yeah, we set sure. one of those in place sure. just to see how that's going to look? Okay. Okay, so approximately like that. And then how like big that. a grout line? You would leave that big a grout yeah, line? Yeah, okay. I think so. And it kind of matches the... to coincide with the that's brick. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is a fantastic solution for this. So yeah, thanks. It's going to be great. My pleasure. Thanks, Thank I just have to finish it. Yeah. Picture the days gone by when gentlemen retreated to the library for port and cigars after dinner. Formal jackets were removed and swapped for comfortable, elegant, and rather sensual smoking jackets. Luxurious fabrics such as soft velvets, shimmering oriental silks, and sumptuous brocades in deep, dark colors are classic, and the jackets would often be embellished with silk cording, a crest, or a monogram. Smoking jackets indeed suggest a studied retreat to calm, comfort, and luxury with just a hint of indulgence. Next on Room Service, we're pulling off the covers and hammering out the details on accessories. You can't use okay. this. <laughs> this is like tiling for dumb dumps. It may have looked a little bit dicey when George and I were working on the fireplace, and I bet you didn't think we knew what we were doing, but it's looking pretty good. We've finished this mosaic section at the top. We've got all of our stone ready to go along the bottom. Now we just have to grout it and wait for this uh, mantle to come in as well. I've turned my attention to some other things, such as the lounge area of this office environment, and I'm going to reveal to you the really exciting part, and that is... Our new chairs, these have just been delivered. We have four leather chairs that have replaced the love seat and two wing chairs that were here before. It's an ideal use of the space. It creates a terrific conversational grouping. Everybody is the perfect distance away from one another. And we were able to incorporate all of these antique tables that George already had. So we have three different woods, which I find interesting. We have a burled walnut here for the oval coffee table. We have a set of really beautiful um, mahogany nesting tables, and then we have this small oak table over here. The great thing is they're all really rich tones, and we're gonna use those to incorporate into all the other elements of this room. We're going to bring in a wood-stained mantle here, and then we've taken a color out of this table that we're gonna use for the office. We wanted something that was stained and really um, rich and more of a masculine feel than something that was a painted finish. So I know you wanna see what does it look like. Well, you can take a look in, but what you can see is it's not here yet because we are waiting for it still to be built. So we have to be patient because these things take time when you're dealing with custom cabinetry it always takes some time but they will be here shortly other things we've done we've brought in a new rug which helps to define this space makes it a bit cozier and also keeps the room from feeling too stuffy so i think that's a great addition i've got accessories here to unpack drapes that are on the way something that's going to go around this radiator here and soften the room this combination of sort of muted greens and rich browns is coming together it's a really masculine environment a place that you want to lounge and hang out, this is a fabulous den for men. 
artisans direct their talents to a wide variety of materials. If you think the age-old art of blacksmithing is limited to being heavy and chunky, you may soon realize that graceful lines and delicate curves can be rendered in what is so often considered a utilitarian material. Blacksmithing of steel involves heating the steel and getting it to a desired shape that's in your mind or on a drawing. Uh, since I can't draw, then all the shapes come out of my mind. And that way, nobody can hold me to it. Iron is not a readily available product anymore. It's called mild steel now because they impose carbon in it to make it a usable metal. Iron in its true form is very soft, and that's why in the old days they did some beautiful, intricate pieces from iron. It was very easy to work with. Now it's, it's at least twice as hard to work with mild steel. We can get iron, but it's very, very cost prohibitive in most applications. So in other words, you use mild steel, you, you have to heat it more, you have to work it more, um, and, and heat it more often. Whereas iron, you could keep it red hot just by striking with a hammer. For Addy, blacksmithing is a family affair. Both his wife and two children are involved in the business. Addy's son and daughter assemble the pieces while his wife translates his thoughts to paper. Together, they create unique custom pieces that blend family spirit with pride of craftsmanship. Your most common concept is that it adds masculinity. And it's not always the case, because you can get a very delicate piece. If it's done nice and the scrolls are very nice, it can actually be very feminine, or it can enhance the delicate side of a, a lot of rooms. I, unfortunately, like to do the, the big, meaty, heavy stuff. Uh, and all the frilly stuff, I'll call it, you know, for lack of a better word, is uh, I let my daughter do. And so she does a lot of the finer scrolls and the finer forging, and I stick to the big, heavy, medieval stuff. And a lot of people in today's society do not understand that you can actually have something made that's for you and, and with you in mind, you know. A lot of places will give you a choice, here's your five choices and you pick from it. And, and we just don't work that way and it's, better, it's been very successful for us. It's never the same, it's always changing, you know. And it's as unique as the people we meet. When it comes to home offices, beauty and function don't necessarily go hand in hand. What do I mean? Well, I know those dry erase boards are very useful, a great place to jot down memos, reminders, and telephone numbers, but I really wanted George's office to look spectacular. So here's what I came up with instead. I went to my glass store and I had a sheet of quarter inch thick glass sandblasted for me. I've put the shiny side out and then I've used some decorative bolts and nuts to hold the sheet of glass just a couple of inches off from the wall. Now that it's in place, it's a great tool for keeping track of all of those important meetings. And when it's all done, you just wipe it clean. Next on Room Service, we retreat to our Live Work Lounge. The installation of the office is complete, the dust is settled, the plastic's been removed, and I have to tell you that I am admiring this fireplace. Now that I look at it, I actually think that this bow front piece looks like it was made for this marble mosaic, and you have to admit, we took what was a really ugly fireplace and we made it look a whole lot better for not a lot of money. Probably the biggest difference was the fireplace. Uh, just to paint the brick alone, just sort of really made it. It just blended right into the walls and with the combination of the mosaics and the limestone, uh, it was fabulous. One of the big changes was putting on this new mantle and it is made of cherry and it has a combination sort of walnut cherry stain on it. You'll also notice our iron fireplace tools and accessories from the people that we went to go visit. And another change that we've made in this space is that we took down the Venetian blind that used to be here. We really needed to soften it and unify it overall, both in colors and textures, but also in some of the accessories to make it feel a little bit more loungy and a lot more inviting. So the drapes that I chose to use are it's actually just a polyester fabric in a kind of olivey tone. We've hung them floor to ceiling, and we did a rod that bows out around the radiator so that they're not draping over the rad. So that was a really effective treatment here. You'll notice we are still using George's antique tables that he had. They've blended seamlessly into this room. 
We've got our lamp that I found when I was out shopping. And again, it has that same warmth and richness because that's really what we want this space to feel like, an inviting spot to come and hang out, either whether it's during the day for meetings or in the evening post-dining. Now, the thing you really want to see, I know, it's the office. And it's here and it is done. So come and check it out. You can see that we use the same wood tone as the mantle for all of our built-ins. And they're done in three sections. First is the desk. Unit. Now we had to do it with a little bit of a notch in the depth of the desk because we only had about 22 inches just inside the door and we wanted our desk overall to be 28 inches deep to accommodate the monitor, the keyboard, the phone, everything else that goes along with it. You can see that everywhere we've gone with just a very simple, it's a beveled edge, a beveled nosing on all of the tabletops. And then we've gone with a shaker panel with a brushed steel handle on the drawers. We've also brought in another hit of that brushed steel with one pendant light. This is a halogen pendant. And as you can see, it just creates a pool of light right in the perfect area of the workstation here. And it's on a dimmer. So if you're working in the evening, the office doesn't have to be really glowing from the street. And then you'll see that for the cats to be able to look out the window and also to have a place to spread out with paperwork we've built in this low almost it's almost like a banquette actually but not designed for sitting on and it also has file drawers here along the bottom we've dressed this radiator on this side by covering it over and what we've done is we've used a decorative punched steel panel to sort of disguise the rad but still make sure that we get enough heat in this room in the winter and we've even managed to eke out a couple of little cabinets on either side the amount of storage that I got for the openness of the office is incredible. I mean, I've got more filing cabinets that I need, and the desk space is perfect. Everything's great. Very happy. This is a really inviting, cozy, masculine-inspired office as a really great offshoot to the lounge area. And I know that I would like to be a guest for dinner so I could spend the evening hours relaxing in there. I'm Sarah Richardson. I hope you'll join me next time on Room Service.